Uh, feel free to turn on your videos as well if, if you can, so that I can actually see my audience. Uh, if not, it's fine. Um, if you would like to ask any questions during my presentation, um, you may raise your hand using the Teams uh, chat function or just please type um, your questions on the chat and our moderators for this session will actually alert me because once I share my slides, I will not be able to see uh, anyone raising their hands. Okay. So um, all, any questions are welcome. So hi, a very good morning. And uh, my name is Jasmine. I'm the head for Malaysia Foundation Programs. And I'm actually very happy this morning to be given the opportunity to be able to speak to you about um, how we uh, embrace learning for our Malaysian Foundation Program students. So without uh, much delay, uh, if you will permit me, I will share my slides now. Okay, can everyone see my slides? It's okay, good. great. So as you can see uh, on the uh, slide, you will actually see an image of our campus building as well. For those of you who have been to our campus, you will be able to notice that we actually have quite a very lovely campus by the lakeside. Um, and on top of our campus is actually a living green roof. And that is a very unique feature of our campus. Uh, our campus actually is a green building. And for those of you who are engineering inclined, you actually find that very interesting. Um, you know, we actually uh, try to, uh, the design of the, of the entire building is actually designed uh, to be a green building where it's energy uh, efficient. So uh, we hope that when the uh, lockdown um, has been, uh, restrictions have been eased, all of you will have the opportunity uh, actually to visit us at our campus. So this is the outline of my talk. Um, I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes to actually give a brief introduction about Herod Ward University. And then we'll talk a little bit about um, what we want uh, in, to develop in our students, which brings us then to the topic of positive education at our university. And then I will actually talk about how we implement this positive education throughout our foundation uh, program. So that will be the gist of my talk. So basically, for um, as a start, um, to introduce you to Herod Ward University, um, Herod Ward University actually was founded in 1821. So we are actually a very old and established university. This year, we celebrate our 200th year centenary, bicentenary uh, celebrations. And um, throughout these 200 years, Herod Ward University has achieved many firsts. So, all of you might not know that actually we were founded as the first mechanics institute um, in Scotland. And we were also the first university in uh, UK to admit women into university. So Herod Ward University actually has a very rich and uh, long-standing heritage. And throughout the years, we have established ourselves as a leading research-led university. And the Herod Ward community of scholars actually are widespread among the world. You know, we have, we have actually, we have thousands of graduates uh, from all over in the areas of business, engineering, um, mathematical sciences, etc. So we have actually three campuses globally. So naturally, you know, um, our main campus or our uh, headquarters is actually uh, based in Edinburgh in Scotland, but there are also two other campuses around uh, Scotland, which are in Orkney and the Scottish borders offering different programs. Um, then we actually also have another campus uh, in Dubai, uh, which has been established for more than 15 years already. And recently, Dubai campus has actually moved to a brand new um, state-of-the-art uh, facilities. 
So the, the newest addition to Herod Ward actually is our Malaysian campus, which is actually located in Putrajaya. And the Malaysian campus actually will be 10 years old next year as well. So basically at the um, campuses uh, all over the world and especially in Malaysia, we focus and are actually top ranked in many of the subjects, uh, namely in accounting and finance, management courses, engineering, marketing, psychology, and actuarial science. And we have recently introduced um, also the computing science for our campus. <clears throat> so as I mentioned before, uh, we actually were established, actually the uh, programs for Heritage University Malaysia started in 2012, but we only moved physically to the campus that you see now on the screen, which is actually facing the Putrajaya Lake in 2014, where we actually admitted in April 2014, we actually admitted our first batch of Malaysia Foundation program students. Um, at the moment, we have about 2,000 or so students who are enrolled with us and uh, about 200 in, uh, staff in total uh, supporting the various academic and also uh, professional services support. So as I said, um, when you have an opportunity, we would love to welcome you to our beautiful campus, uh, which is actually facing the lake. So when you enter uh, Heritage University Malaysia, you are actually part of a global network, a global uh, a community of Heritage Watt. So uh, if you are students from our undergraduate program, actually are guaranteed campus transfers to any of the campuses in UK or Dubai, as long as the programs that they are studying are actually offered in those respective campuses. And we actually call this a Go Global program. So once you enter our undergraduate degree program, you may choose to transfer to UK or Dubai um, in your second year, third year, or you may just choose to go there for one semester and come back. Uh, some students might choose to go to the overseas campus and they decide to graduate there. So there is a, a lot of flexibility in terms of how you want to plan your studies, whether you want to fin finish your studies completely in Malaysia or you wish to actually transfer to our UK campus or Dubai campus to complete your studies. So students who transfer under this Go Global uh, program uh, when they are in their undergraduate degree will actually also uh, enjoy a 20% tuition fee waiver of the international fees. So this is something that you can actually discuss uh, later when, you know, after you complete your foundation program with us as to uh, whether um, uh, your, in terms of your plans for transfer and every year we will open up the applications for students to transfer. Of course, during the, this uh, time of the pandemic last year, we actually uh, suspended the transfer, but we are actually uh, starting to, I think, open up the transfer again from September um, this year. So before I actually go on to talk about our foundation programs, I just want us to actually pause for a while to think about, you know, um, what we actually want for our future. And I'm not sure if there are any parents in the audience, but I think the first thing that I actually want to talk about is, you know, let us think about, you know, as parents, what we want for our children. And, you know, if there are students in, in this uh, session now, you know, you just think about what normally do parents want for you. And I can tell you that most of the time, most parents, when I ask them the questions, is they actually want their uh, children to be happy. You know, they want them to be successful. They want them to be independent. They want them to get good careers. They want them to be caring individuals. They want them to be healthy, etc. And you know, that is basically the wish for everybody, you know, uh, in terms of uh, wishing for their uh, children to be successful. But at the same time, you will see that while, you know, um, in many universities or even in schools, we are actually helping to prepare students to excel academically, to be successful in their studies, you will also see that there are actually uh, many other frustrations that are co uh, coming up, which, you know, uh, where students or uh, when they graduate or complete their studies, you know, they might be facing challenges to actually lead 
these happy, fulfilling lives that we wish for them. So the question that we also uh, want to ponder about is, you know, are we actually uh, also preparing students to face future challenges of the world? So we know that, you know, um, challenges and changes are inevitable. And one of the challenges that we have faced recently since last year, and we are all still in the middle of it, is uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. So COVID-19 pandemic actually, uh, I, as you all are aware, you know, has actually changed all our lives drastically. So like today, we are attending a virtual open day when, you know, in the past, we would have been going to campus, we would have been meeting you face to face, you know, talking to you, sitting in front of a, a, a desk, you know, and, or I'm, I will be doing this maybe in a room and then I'll be able to see all of you. But this has all changed because of the current situation. So how do we prepare ourselves to cope for any future changes? And one of the things that we know that is changing now is the uh, fast advancement of technology, right? And we call this an industry 4.0 revolution. So as you know, uh, humankind move from agriculture based to industrial based to manufacturing based, and then now we are now in the internet era, it is has actually impacted uh, the way jobs are being perceived, you know, the type of jobs that are out there now. So many uh, of our youth today are faced with the prospect that this, the degree that you study for or the discipline that you are studying for might actually be uh, chain, might, might actually have new requirements in the future based on these technological advancements. New skills might need to be developed. Jobs that exist today might disappear you know, in the five years time or 10 years time, they might be replaced by new jobs, but we would not know actually what they are. So the what we can do is, although we cannot really predict or expect what to expect in the future, we can prepare ourselves to be able to adapt and to face these challenges when they come. So uh, one thing that I can share with you now, you know, is that there are actually a lot of statistics that shows that, you know, how many number of jobs might be lost in the future. And, you know, this is just a, a study from McKinsey and company that predict that, you know, in 10 years time, 800 million could lose their jobs or, you know, uh, and half of those will have to change jobs. And there will be others who will need to actually uh, look for new jobs that are being created. And on top of that, you know, with all these new changing jobs, there are actually the skills that are being required by all these jobs actually has been changing throughout the years. So if you think, talk about 10 years ago, many of the jobs skills, the skills that are being actually um, looked for by employers could be made a lot of hard skills. Like they, they would require you to have very technical skills and that is what they would be asking for. But because of the current situation where we need to adapt to changes quickly, you will see that a lot of these skills now are quickly changing, you know, to be more of the soft skills, the life skills, or what we would call also the personal effectiveness skills, such as analytical thinking, you know, uh, leadership skills, creativity, critical thinking, you know, to be resilient, to be able to actually um, uh, adapt to new challenges to, to be able to uh, adapt to stress, working with people, you know, um, in this new cyber world. So you can see that this type of skills are now slowly, you know, uh, changing to be different types of skills and hard skills are not really something that is being emphasized a lot because Employers know that once you attend a university and, a rep and especially a reputable university, the hard skills are already well developed. You know, um, you will have actually acquired the very basic foundational skills that will require you to do certain jobs. But the types of skills that they are looking for are more than that. You know, they are a lot of these intangible skills or the personal effectiveness skills. And in Malaysia as well, you will see that you know, uh, some of the survey that are being done indicate that a lot of employers are actually looking for graduates with 
what they call the life skills or soft skills. So many employers view that these skills are equally or not, or maybe even more important than the, act the actual hard skills itself. And they would like to see graduates coming out with this type of skills and also the, men the ability to adapt and to be able to have that lifelong learning kind of attitude. At the same time, we also, you know, uh, as I was saying, that in order to be able to actually adapt to all these changes, we need to build our mental resilience. We need to be able to uh, face challenges that come among us. And to be able to do that, we have to build very strong mental health resilience. You know, uh, we, we need to ensure that we are emotionally stable and strong. But at the same time, you know, if we look at what the news have been telling us, the mental health among our youth has also been uh, deteriorating, whereby, you know, with uh, over the past few years, actually survey statistics have shown that many of our young people actually do suffer from um, issues like depression. Many of them have anxiety issues or they feel stressed and pressured. And with the uh, existing uh, situation that we are in now, you know, with a lot of uh, maybe online learning, the un, un um, the unpredictability of when exams will take place, you know, uh, and whether they can go to school, etc. Actually, I think this has also created a lot of this uh, anxiety among um, our youth. So we realize as a university that in order for us to be able to address all this, we actually need to look at how we develop our graduates in a more holistic manner. You know? So we not only talk about the academic programs that we have, but we actually want to focus on uh, developing our graduates in such a way that when they complete their studies and graduate with us, we prepare them for the future. And, and that's why you can see the, the title of my talk is actually, I said, you know, uh, preparing you to be fit for future. So at Harry Ward University, we actually embrace uh, a philosophy you know, and a framework that we actually call positive education. And this positive education framework you know, is actually embedded into all our program delivery and throughout our student activities as well. So the framework that we are applying at Harriet Watt University, which is actually positive education, not only focus on academic excellence, whereby of course you are still expected to be able to excel in your studies. We will help prepare you in the academic disciplines that you have selected. But at the same time, we will also help develop the personal effectiveness skills you know, um, that are really, really important to help you to, to thrive, uh, to be able to adapt to challenges. So uh, skills such as you know, self-confidence, leadership skills, communication skills, you know, um, to, uh, to build your um, uh, emotional intelligence, etc. And at the same time, we also focus on building mental and emotional resilience and helping you to actually uh, 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 improve your well-being throughout your studies. And the core of this framework in helping you to develop all these skills is actually we, we believe in helping students to realize their purpose and their sense of meaning. So we actually do guide our students when they enter at the undergraduate program to be able to develop this sense of purpose because with this sense of purpose and through developing the academic excellence, the personal effectiveness, the resilience and the well-being, we believe that actually all our graduates then will be able to flourish well as individuals and as human beings. They will be able to be successful in their academic studies, in their lives, and at the same time, be able to have an impact on the world. And this is the model of positive education that we actually apply throughout our programs at Harriet Ward University, Malaysia. So now let's look at how we actually uh, do that at our Malaysian Foundation program. So as I mentioned, you know, last year, the COVID-19 actually, you know, uh, has uh, disrupted many of the things that we normally do traditionally. 
So what we have done at the foundation program is also we had to actually embark on redesigning the way that we deliver the program such that it can be effective when it's delivered in an online blended mode, you know, where we might not see students face to face on campus. So how do we do it and design the activity such that students will still be engrossed and immersed in their learning and you know, not, uh, not uh, feel uh, left out or you know, not being able to um, interact with their peers, etc. So the, the way that we have designed our Malaysian Foundation program, we call it a digital first approach. And there are actually four components towards the design of the Malaysian Foundation program. We did not change anything about the curriculum. So the, cur the curriculum remains the same as what we had before. We still have all the courses that we offered. The assessments still remain largely similar, except some of them had to be converted to online assessments. But in terms of the design of the uh, learning activities and the content, we actually introduce more challenge-based learning approach. You know, uh, helping students to realize how to apply it to real-world applications. We actually, because we had to do everything online, we actually had to rely more on technology to actually help monitor students' progress. So the platform that we use actually enable us to produce some learning analytics to track how students are progressing in their learning. You know, and this enable us then to be able to uh, see what type of support are being required for us to, to help the students. Like maybe some students needed some reminders. Some students needed to be prodded, you know, in terms of, hey, you know, um, how are you doing? I don't see you uh, being very active in completing your activities. Do you need help, etc. So in terms of the delivery mode as well, we actually wanted it to be more engaging and more interactive. So we actually put in a lot of effort. The lecturers put in a lot of time and effort to actually create a lot of interesting and more engaging learning activities that are embedded into the learning platform. And on uh, before we uh, before students actually come onto our program, we actually prepared a very special what we call an online orientation uh, program, which is called Fit for Future, to actually prepare our students to to navigate through this online delivery platform, and you know to help them uh, get used to this. Uh, learning a uh, new t new way of learning you know uh, that is brought on by uh, the current uh, situation so the fit for future orientation is actually a, a one week program actually it's five days it starts one week before your foundation program and students will come in and then they actually are uh, put into certain activities which focuses on developing their, you know, helping them to look at how they can develop a successful mindset, you know, uh, helping them to bond with their classmates, they make friends, and there are certain uh, light activities that students have to do, which help to develop some self-confidence and they gain some awareness of their learning styles, etc. And this is just to actually prepare them to have that proper mindset before they come into the foundation program. So basically, um, what uh, our students will go through is they will see this on our virtual learning environment, you know, and these are the topics. So it looks very nice and colorful and very interesting and very engaging. And we run face-to-face -face, uh, virtual webinars, of course, you know, uh, since it's online delivery with our uh, students. So the lecturers will be online. We also use some of our senior students to, to help to help the students, you know, to interact with the students, to share experiences, and and students go through this um, program throughout the week to to help prepare them. So we have actually offered this uh, previously uh, for last year's students, and we found that many students actually uh, gave very positive uh, comments about the program. You know, they they really felt that it helped them, and actually. More than that, I would say that many of the students really enjoyed the program. You know, they, they really felt very positive about the program. And just to share you know, a couple of student testimonials that you can see now on the slide. These are some of the, you know, the testimonials. And basically, you'll see that every semester when we run this, 
the testimonials have been every, actually equally positive. The students feel very uh, empowered by the program. They felt that it has helped them to build confidence. It has actually, it was fun and it was amazing and they get to meet, meet new people and you know, they, they enjoy learning about the new environment, etc. So this is the uh, online orientation program, which is unique to our foundation program, uh, which is offered to all foundation students who join us. And for the next intake in July, we will start the um, Fit for Future program actually on the 19th of July. And then for September intake, it will be uh, end of August. So in the uh, foundation program itself, all the courses that students will learn, actually, as I said, they go through this real world based application or we call it a challenge based pedagogy. So every course that you learn, actually, we create it around a narrative or a story so that students, when they are learning, they don't find it too dull and boring. Immediately, they will be able to actually relate it to a real life or real world application. For example, you know, uh, the current uh, storyline or narrative that we use, we tell students that they are in a futuristic city and it's a smart city. And, and you know, uh, all the courses that they are learning actually help them to build certain components of this city. So like in mathematics, they could be working on developing a smart stadium. You know, um, in the English, they, you know, they, they could be working as journalists uh, trying to report certain things that are happening. So in chemistry, they might be conducting some research uh, that, that deal with some, um, some uh, smart uh, elements, you know, uh, uh, that keeps the city safe or, you know, environmental friendly, etc. So these are uh, what we call authentic learning experience, whereby the learning components are related to current issues and also to real world or real life applications. So this um, learning, authentic learning experience is actually um, reflected in each week's learning activities. And students would be able to learn that and be able to actually also communicate between their peers and their classmates and their lecturers uh, or when they actually share the activities on the platform. So examples of some of the activities that we provide on the platform are, you know, are opportunities to post comments. Students have to actually answer certain questions and they post it up, or there could be some multiple choice quizzes. They might be requested to post a video, or there will be some like maybe crossword puzzle you know, that they will need to do. And for some of the science uh, courses, because lab might not be accessible during this period of lockdown, there would be some interesting home experiments that your lecturers would have designed for you to be able to conduct safe experiments at home, but still be able to learn the concepts that, that we want you to learn through those courses. And one of the other features would be we have actually incorporated and utilized some of our Herod Ward uh, subject experts to provide short mini videos as well, which we post uh, on the learning platform. So these uh, Herod Ward experts are not coming from your lecturers only, but we try to get the other Herod Ward community involved and also external people. So some, some of the talks are given by industry people. For example, we have one, actually it's a, a sort of a interview where he introduces certain concepts about foreign exchange rates, etc. cetera. Uh, the CEO of Standard Chartered Bank. We have actually our principal and provost uh, Professor Richard Williams, all the way from Edinburgh campus, who actually recorded a very short mini lecture on chirogenic liquids and, and we posted it for our chemistry students. And we also have our executive dean uh, from Edinburgh Business School, Heather McGregor, who actually talks about you know, uh, topics like building social capital, you know, and uh, some of the topics in um, economics where, you know, we have also posted that onto our learning platform. And we also use some of our local uh, Herod Ward University Malaysia uh, experts who have helped to record and, and put up certain mini videos uh, of certain topics in our platform. So as I mentioned, the uh, platform enables us to track 
students' learning uh, progress, but it's not only for lecturers to track. It's actually also for students to be able to track how they are doing. So the student can actually monitor and you know, check whether they have completed all the required activities week by week. So yes, you can see on the left-hand side of the um, slide, you know, there are ticks uh, on the green ticks and then it says completed, completed. So students can actually self-monitor their progress. And we have had students who actually check and then they come back to a lecturer and said, hey, how come, you know, uh, I thought I've completed the activities, but it doesn't indicate that I've completed, you know, maybe I need to review and go back and uh, do certain activities. So this actually helps the students to be able to self-monitor their own progress and to ensure that they actually have completed all the activities required so that they are well prepared for each course. And we are actually able to produce learning analytics uh, for anyone who requires it. For example, if your parents uh, need that, um, we would also be able to, to have that. So. Before I end actually the presentation, I would just like to also share some feedback <clears throat> from our current students or past students from last year who have uh, given uh, us positive feedback on the learning experience that they have had. So you can see here, these are actually feedback from actually the specific courses uh, that we are offering. Uh, contemporary business, which is part of the Foundation in Business program. The students have commented that they enjoyed the videos. They found that it makes it more enjoyable to do their coursework. Uh, in the economics course, they, they said that the variety of information and resources provided you know, has helped them and they enjoy that. And some of them said they enjoy the group work and how they get to share their thoughts, etc. For mathematics, um, the, you know, the, the students appreciate the feedback given by the instructor every time they complete an activity and they found that the content was good and it helped them. An example for chemistry as well, you know, um, they, they felt that the learning activities, you know, helped them to think out of the box and they, they truly enjoyed it. So these are actually some of the, the uh, comments that we get from students who have actually embraced this new way of learning, you know, they embrace the, the new delivery platform and they are actually open to it and they have actually found that it actually provided them with a very uh, fr satisfying and, you know, uh, fruitful learning experience. So in, in um, conclusion, many of the benefits of this learning approach that we could see, you know, uh, on this new platform that we have is the learning process is actually very structured and organized. It trains our students to be more independent. So it prepares them well uh, for their studies in undergraduate level, helps to improve time management and ability to self-manage because we actually um, track the activities week by week. So we want the students to put in consistent work every week and not just do last minute study at the end of the semester. So this actually helps the students to plan their uh, weekly schedule according to what they are required to finish. Students have to now, you know, they have to um, type things into the platform. We expect students to post some uh, feedback or reflection, and I think it helps students to improve on their nonverbal communication skills. You know, um, of course, all the learning materials are available 24-7, so students may access them at any time that they wish. Uh, all the webinar sessions will be recorded, and then the recordings are also posted on the platform. And the, uh, as I mentioned just now, students can self-monitor their progress, and there's a lot of opportunity for students to actually develop the ability to self-reflect on the learning. So this actually... Um, helps the students to develop this sense of more self-directed learning, you know, uh, instead of just uh, going through a process where you are being spoon-fed and pushed all the time, you know, by an external uh, force, you know, we want you to develop this more independent way of learning. So the teaching and learning approach that we actually apply is basically what is being applied throughout the entire university, which we call the responsive blended learning. So what is responsive blended learning? And we have actually come up with this term because it's actually in response to the unpredictable uh, situation that we have uh, brought about by COVID where we might have uh, 
full lockdown to you know enhance MCO to conditional MCO, where you know certain groups of students might be allowed to come back to campus while others might not be allowed. So what we have done is that the entire learning content and activities has been designed such that it is we are able to respond and adapt very quickly and very fast to whatever condition that has changed. You know, so basically at the core of it is the learning hub, which is your virtual learning environment, which is what I have explained just now, you know, all the learning content and everything, it's still, it will be there all the time. So it will be supported by our online sessions, which will be the webinar sessions that uh, that uh, students will still meet up with the lecturers virtually online, you know, to have live teaching sessions, you know, uh, they will have uh, discussions, face-to-face -face group discussions with their classmates, we have activities online, and those will be uh, uh, done virtually. And then if the situation allows it, we would then actually uh, be able to offer some uh, limited face-to-face on-campus activities. So whether we have the face-to-face on-campus activities or not, students will actually not be disadvantaged even if they cannot attend the activities because all the learning has already been included in the design of, the, of our lessons in the virtual learning environment. So we cater actually to all situations where, you know, if, if the situation allows and students can come back to campus, some students will be able to do that. But we also do realize that maybe sometimes some students cannot because of different state travel restrictions, students who are stuck overseas. So we'll still need to deliver those online. And that is what responsive blended learning is. So just to, uh, as a reminder, or just to let every, you know, uh, to uh, give you uh, an outline of what we offer in foundation program. Basically, we have actually two broad uh, foundation pathways, which are actually the foundation in science and the foundation in business. So foundation in science, um, students uh, normally who are interested to proceed to progress to engineering degrees, they have to do foundation in science. Um, students who actually want to do the other degrees like actuarial science, computing, psychology, can still progress through our foundation in science. For students who want to, who are fixed and they actually just want to pursue business related programs, then they, would, they can choose foundation in business, which offers uh, routes to psychology and also um, management and we in the foundation in business we also have an actuarial science pathway where students um, can they need to take a mathematics course in foundation in business to be able to actually progress to actuarial science da uh, statistical data science uh, and computing science as well so so basically these are the two broad uh, the two foundation uh, programs that we offer and whichever program that you choose, you know, you, you would be able to progress to the undergraduate discipline of your choice. So on completion of your foundation program, we will issue with you with a certificate and this certificate actually will, you know, it's a recognized certificate offered by Harriet Ward University UK, and it's also an MQA accredited certificate. Uh, the certificate is actually a certificate in higher education in foundation in science or foundation in business. And the certificate in higher education is recognized as a, as a pre-university certificate to enter actually um, university studies in UK as well. So it's a, a certificate that is actually uh, recognized under the Scottish credit framework. So with that, I actually end my presentation now um, and I will uh, open up to any specific questions that you would have. So you can see from the last chart is, this is a bird's eye view of actually our campus as it looks like. And you, know, you can see the, the lakeside and the beautiful uh, green roof uh, you know, where, uh, which uh, it's really a stunning view from our campus. And for those of us who have not been back to campus, I think we really miss uh, visiting our campus. So I'd like to end now.
um, I'd like to end my presentation now and I'm opening up to questions. So you may raise your hand, turn on your mic, turn on your video if, if that, would, uh, that would be good, if we can see you or just type any questions onto the chat and I'll be happy to address any questions. Are there any questions? Hi. Hi, hi, Jasmine. Yes, hi, we can hi. hear you. This, uh, this is Louise. Um, I'm uh, Ryan's mother. All right, hi. Hi, hi. Can I just check with you, what is the uh, minimum criteria for both uh, foundations in engineering and uh, business uh, uh, for IGCSE students? Okay, um, the minimum criteria that we are looking at is actually minimum five credits. Um, so if uh, in your IGCSE, but we, we look at specific courses, academic courses, you know, um, so uh, basically uh, if you're a science student and you want to enter foundation in science, uh, what is important is that we are looking at credits in um, mathematics, English and uh, physics are actually compulsory and then the rest we will look at the other science courses that you take. Huh? Okay. Okay, uh, if it's foundation in business? Foundation in business, generally, we are just considering math and um, uh, English, and then we will look at the other academic courses. So basically, when I say academic courses, is you know, basically, if it's like um, uh, business courses, history, geography, you know, and not, not courses like if it's arts or music, those, those we, we would not uh, consider as academic courses. Mm -hmm. If he is currently a, a science student, uh, but interested in the uh, business, the foundation in business, so uh, means uh, English, maths. Uh, yeah, and any of the other sciences. Business, yeah, uh, any yeah. other sciences and business studies also yes. uh, consider academic, right? Yes, that's right. Okay. But uh, currently, it's based on mock. Uh, if we want to join the July uh, uh, enrollment, so it will be based on mock exam, right? What happened if the actual result <laughs> is uh, not as promising? What will happen then? Okay, I will um, give you an answer, but in, in case, uh, you know, yeah. because I have the uh, education consultant who might be able to, to give more uh, input on that. Yeah, basically, uh, we would accept, uh, currently, we, we are look, I think we do accept the trial exam or the mock exam results uh, by giving a conditional offer. Yeah. Um, um, in the case that the actual results, when it comes out, it didn't meet the five credit requirement, then we would need to review the student status. But I, but I, we hope that he would have taken more than five subjects at uh, GCSE, right? So, yeah. so usually we, we do not foresee that the student might not meet. But in the case that did not meet, then unfortunately we are unable to, to uh, let the student continue uh, mm -hmm. with the program. So perhaps uh, alternative would be uh, the student might have to reset, yes, you know, uh, reset and then come back again after they have uh, reset for, to make up for the five credits. Okay, okay. All right, thank you. So I hope that was uh, helpful and I'm not sure if any of the uh, education consultants here would like to add to that. Hello, uh, I'm one of the education consultant here. So just to clarify that your son has set for the IGCSE summer paper, right? Yes. So for our requirements on that is that we he would have to join the September intake, not the July intake, because oh. we would have to wait for his actual results to be released first. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he only can join the September intake? Yes, correct. For IGCSE qualification, correct. Okay, okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> are there other questions? Um, I see on the chat there's a question on scholarship. So I think maybe the EC can can um, answer that. Yeah, that we do have scholarships uh, based on the, I think there's the high achiever scholarships. 
uh, that are being offered uh, based on actual results. So, so the scholarships are only for those who have with actual results at the moment. And I think uh, the EC can maybe uh, provide more information on the scholarships. And the other thing that I'd like to uh, also talk when you talk about scholarships is all our foundation students, when they complete the foundation, if they score an average uh, mark of uh, equivalent to what we call an A uh, in the foundation, you know, um, so they do very well, they are automatically granted uh, what we call a high achiever scholarship of 35% uh, tuition fee waiver of the first year undergraduate fees. So this is an automatic uh, progression uh, scholarship that we offer to all our foundation students. Um, you know, we, they don't have to apply for it. And this is, I think, on top of the uh, progression discount that is given to all students as well. Are there other questions at the moment? So um, if anyone would like to further, uh, you know, like communicate with me after this session, anyone has think, think of any questions, you can actually email me directly. I'm typing my email on the chat now. It's actually jasmine.lo at heritward.ac.uk. So you can actually uh, send me an email if you think of anything that you want to ask me uh, directly and I'll be happy to address them. Or if you want to actually um, set up a, a, a meeting with me, you know, uh, to talk, to, to further discuss, I'll be happy to do that as well. So you can actually uh, give me, a, I mean, give me your number, I could call you or we could do it on Teams chat. Any other questions? If not, then I guess we can end the session. And to those of you, you know, sitting for exams, well, all the best to those preparing for exams. Thank you so much. Bye, madam. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Okay, I will leave now. All right. If there are no further thank questions, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone.